The way we've got the program structured right now, it offers a um, sort of a core group of, of, of courses that all the majors take, and those, we call those keystone courses. When we devised this new curriculum of, uh, about three years ago, we, what we decided to do was to make sure that in every semester, we brought the science and the policy people together in at least one course. Our majors get a, a strong foundation first in the natural sciences. So regardless of the concentration that they go through, they will have a, a, a year of introductory biology and um, depending on the concentration, they'll have either half year or full year of chemistry. And they all take ecology, so that's a, another natural science class. And then on the policy side, they all take American national government and a political process and the environment. So that is the foundation of, of their science and policy. At Marist College, students are involved uh, in research projects from the start to the end. They participate in uh, experimental design of the research. They participate in data collection. They learn how to do um, efficiently um, literature search. They collect data and analyze them. My interest in teaching goes beyond uh, traditional classroom duties. I consider research a very important aspect of science. Marist has a uh, program here that uh, offers students choices in how they can get involved. You can have an environmental science major and um, one that focuses more on policy or on uh, science. You can also um, minor in environmental science and, and environmental policy and environmental studies. So there's a lot of options for people. When I came into Marist, I was not interested in science, but it had uh, like journalism, which I was interested in. Pretty much any other major that I came in undecided, any other major that I wanted to do was here. And then when I got here, I had an environmental science class, which was amazing. I was like, you know what? I think this is the right thing for me. Hi, my name is Rachel Serafin. I uh, got started in these projects with Dr. Gagnon, working with silver nanoparticles uh, a little over a year ago. And since then, I have been working with different models. We've used tomato plants, looking at their effects, and also chick embryos, and now crayfish. Uh, what is interesting and has really caught, uh, caught my attention is the fact that we are finding a response in these organisms to the silver nanoparticles, and that there is DNA damage. And I think the further research of these nanoparticles are much needed. The small science department um, would be able to give you attention because I also looked at um, huge schools like schools that were like 14,000 like undergrad and those um, science classes would be like 300 people and that would just not fit for me because I like the smaller classes and it would allow you to have a attachment with your professors and um, that would really help you. They really want to help you out because they know like the science courses here are, are pretty challenging. So like I've seen all of my professors during office hours, and they're always willing to to help me out and to you know make sure I understand the information if I need anything at all. They're always there. The things I've learned during this project have been invaluable. I've learned how to make the nanoparticles we're using. I've learned how to design and set up uh, real research projects, and the the skills I've learned will be essential for me getting into grad school, which I hope to do. There's a great student-faculty uh, ratio, and I think Marist also pulls on the community for uh, the teaching expertise, so there's a lot of adjunct uh, instructors who bring real-world real world experience to the courses that they're teaching. We like working with students. I mean, that's, that's the fun part. That's the gratifying part of it. And then, you know, watch, and those students come back after graduation and, and so you can um, you can see you know uh, sort of watch their careers develop and you know watch them start their families and you know meet their kids and you know all that kind of stuff so I mean that's uh, 
uh, you know, that's the gratifying part of the job when you see that, that uh, you know, you actually have made a difference in, in people's lives. During my ecology class, we'll come down to the greenhouse and, and look at examples of certain adaptations that I'm speaking about in ecology. I've also used the greenhouse to, um, to experiment both in ecology lab and also as summer research experiments uh, with my students. Typically those experiments relate to some agricultural work that I've done. I mean, we've got a dedicated lab downstairs where most of our environmental science uh, type courses are taught. Okay. We've got a small lab which has just been completely renovated and refurbished uh, down attached to the Cornell Boathouse. Okay. Then we've got the chem labs that were um, renovated or you know, sort of top of the line at this point. The, the crown jewel from my perspective as a field biologist is Fern Tour, which is our forest preserve, 12 acres of largely untouched uh, forest land at the north end of the campus, uh, which has a small creek running through it, and also that creek empties into a pond. Yeah, the Hudson Valley, um, I knew it was like a big thing, but I didn't know how like awesome it was until I actually came to Mayors. Uh, the fact that there's a lot of environmental policy and science history right here in the Hudson Valley, a lot of um, really core environmental laws um, got their start right here in the Hudson Valley. Marist College is located on Hudson River and the location gives us a um, unique opportunity to use Hudson River as a, a great laboratory and gives us opportunity to research the effect of some contaminants that persist in Hudson River. This research is supported by Hudson River Foundation. My students investigated the exposure to PCBs using um, orga organisms from Hudson River. And recently, the focus on exposure to nanoparticles, it's also related to um, watershed and Hudson River um, uh, estuary. Scenic Hudson has established a number of reserves up and down the river valley and we utilize one of these across the river only 15 minutes from here, the Black Creek Forest Preserve. Well because they have an internship program they can get students involved with groups that are working on um, environmental issues right here in the Hudson Valley. Um, so I think that's a, that's a big feature. And this past summer I interned at Harvard School of Public Health doing helping a grad student with um, her malaria project. What I was doing was um, making clones for um, a few genes that she wanted to uh, <laughs> uh, do testing for protein. I worked in Wyoming this summer for the Department of Game and Fish. I applied for it and within a week or two, the woman who I worked for asked to interview me. She was impressed with the background I had, especially the GIS. It was a research study that was studying the effects of the coal bed methane runoff from all the recent energy development and what the effluent um, coal bed methane discharge it has on the in-stream habitats and the fish populations of the Powder River. In the summer before, I worked at a wildlife refuge in Maryland and I just did a lot of invasive species work. So we map out like um, invasive species that we saw around the refuge and then put them on the map. It's essential, especially in regard to climate change, that everyone, not just majors, be educated on these, these key issues that uh, influence the vitality of our societies, not simply the vitality of our ecosystems. The world will be fine, but I think what people don't realize is that humans are very fragile and can only exist in the world at a certain, you know, at what it's at right now. And the more we harm it, the, the worse the planet overall will react. And if you say, well, there's nothing we can do, then, you know, then there is nothing we're going to do. It's not just a science like matter, it's also like business and economics. Environmental science is the way to assess really what the challenges are and how to um how to solve them.